let's turn our attention over to uh, the two stocks I pulled out um, from the market. And the first one is actually a type of equity that, Todd, you and I don't talk about a whole lot, but I certainly think uh, this one has its place. And that is a healthcare real estate pick, specifically a company called HCP Inc. It is what is known as a REIT or a real estate investment trust. Um, and so, oftentimes, many of our listeners aren't familiar with what a REIT is. So, just to give you an overview, um, traditionally, most of us, myself included, just can't go out and buy real estate um, at will. But what we can do is pull our resources together as investors and then actually buy a collection of properties or real estate assets. And that's exactly what REITs do. Uh, REITs also have a very special tax uh, status, which basically requires them to pay out at least 90% of their income as dividends. And if they do, they just aren't taxed at the corporate level like most other businesses. Um, so, the business model for an equity REIT in particular, which is what we're talking about, not a mortgage REIT, which you certainly want to stay away from, but from an equity REIT perspective, um, they buy properties, lease those properties to tenants. This provides a nice steady stream of income, most of which is then passed to us, the shareholders. What's really interesting about these um, these REITs is is the fact that you know you look at other REITs like mall operators, right, and how e-commerce is is causing places like Sears to 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 abandon stores, and those mall operators are under pressure, right? Well, you don't necessarily. I'm not going to say you you wouldn't have closures or va high vacancy rates with um, healthcare REITs like this, but I think it's less likely because you know. Healthcare is relatively inelastic to the economic cycle. You know, if you need healthcare, you're going to go out and seek healthcare. And right now, there's a, a tremendous amount of money that's sloshing around um, in in drug development and and just a specialists, you name it, in providing care to all those baby boomers. And as a result, that's leading to these companies having you know pretty stable and high um, occupancy rates. Absolutely. And just to put some stats behind that, right now, $1.1 trillion worth of healthcare real estate is in existence, but only 15% of this is actually REIT owned. Compare that to commercial real estate, like you were mentioning, Todd, like retail shopping centers, malls, even hotels. That's about 40% REIT owned. So I feel like the opportunity is certainly massive for healthcare REITs. You mentioned the aging baby boomer population. Uh, we know that's going to be a massive growth opportunity in the healthcare space. You also mentioned the economy as well. If things start to turn south, generally healthcare expenses are one of the last to go. Um, and also, too, we talked about it on last week's show uh, with our telemedicine, uh, telehealth show. Um, you see insurers and payers favoring a lot more of these off-site, uh, lower-cost facilities. And that's really what a lot of these really strong REITs are going after, are these assets that are not hospital-based, but they are separate, standalone facilities. And so, that's why I think healthcare REITs, in particular, make such a compelling investment. Um, and so, HCP has been uh, an interesting uh, equity to follow for a number of reasons. And I'd say number one is that it's truly a turnaround story if there is ever one. Um, if you even go back to 2016, this particular stock um, was down. Uh, I have to go back and look at the numbers, but I want to say it was down almost 40% at one point. Um, and a lot of that was because of his exposure to skilled nursing facilities. Skilled nursing facilities are basically long term care for patients who have difficulty doing like regular day to day activities. Um, Back then, HCP, their portfolio was heavily concentrated in these skilled nursing facilities. I think in 2016, it was about 26% or so. They've actually now diversified their real estate portfolio to move away from those skilled nursing facilities. And the reason is because those facilities are much more dependent on government reimbursement. Now, they are much more focused on private payers, which provides a much steadier stream of income and also to just allows for a much more diversified base. Right. And you're allowed to put those contracts in, have built in escalators and those type of things that can help offset some of your rising costs. You know, I think one of the concerns that some people have had um, lately is that in a rising interest rate environment, some dividend stocks look less attractive because now you can go out and you can buy short term bonds and get relatively competitive yields to what the S&P 500 may be yielding especially if rates continue to climb over the course of the next year um, and that's kind of made it 
I guess some of these higher dividend paying stocks um, more attractive because okay, well, if I if only can only earn less than two percent on on the S and P, why would I want to take on that risk? I can go out and I can buy this short term bond instead with less risk. Well, now if you're talking about a higher dividend than that, then it becomes a little bit more compelling. Absolutely. So right now their dividend, I believe they're right at about a five percent yield, which is uh, pretty impressive, especially for those that are looking for a steady stream of income. Uh, the shares are trading for about twenty nine dollars a share. Um, you did see in January and February of this year, most REITs going back to the interest rate sensitivity. Most REITs did take a hit as the Feds continued to raise rates. Um, what's been interesting though is with HCP in particular, um, they have been able to not only recover. Those losses, but are actually doing quite well. Um, even after the fact they took a tumble in October, um, they are at twenty nine dollars a share, up about forty percent from its lows from January and February. Um, and this really does go against conventional wisdom with REITs, where the mantra truly is "stay away" when the Fed interest rates are at play. Um, so this stock has a lot to offer in terms of long-term growth. Um, I would also add, too, um, there were some management missteps along the way that I think got them into a portfolio that was so heavily concentrated in an area that was declining. Um, but they've been able to spin off assets. Uh, they sp spun off their skilled nursing assets into a newly created REIT, actually called QCP. They did sell a substantial amount of uh, its Brookdale-occupied properties, transitioned 35 others to new operators. Um, and also just exited several other non-core investments. So strategically, now this company is just much more in line to have predictable revenue streams. Now much more diversified and focused company, and it's got three core areas: senior housing, it's got life science properties, and medical offices. And those are going to be those areas that I mentioned are much less reliant on government reimbursement, but also too are really kind of the core areas that you see the industry transitioning to as. As well, yeah, and I think that those properties become are are increasingly valuable. Um, you know, you figure you have to sometimes they have to be built out specifically with with you know things like ventilation, certain ventilation, et cetera, et cetera, that uh, kind of creates a stickiness, if you will, with the people who are renting those spaces from you. Um, so, I mean, I think obviously in in the future you got to keep an eye on things like what's going on with um, the National Institute of Health's uh, funding budgets and, and how much money is going into research. You got to keep an eye on how much money is going to venture capital um, that's allowing some of these university researchers to spin off and create their own new businesses. Those kind of things will also um, will will play a role in determining you know vacancy rates in the future, but. For now, like you said, I mean, it's. I think that this company is doing a pretty good job in in getting itself back on track. Yep, and not only that, the balance sheet is also improving. Um, HCP is now. It's basically been paying down a lot of its debt. Its net debt to adjusted EBITDA has dropped from six and a half times to six times on a pro forma basis. This actually led to an improved credit rating um, from the S and P recently as well. And so that's just freed up a lot more cash for them to go after a lot of these strategic moves um, and go into those more lucrative assets. So definitely one to watch. I do think, um, like the other company, this will be a bumpy road ahead. We're still in a rising rate environment. I think the Feds are. Expected to raise rates in 2019 at least three more times, um, from what I've heard. So, still in transformation phase, still has a long way to go, but I think this company is certainly one to watch.